my peoples what's going on today's lesson is about teaching you guys how to structure a proper workout plan or the proper training split in order to optimize your efficiency and your ability to perform at the highest level within your sport okay i often get this question of how many times a week should i work out in order to develop speed or change the direction and agility or whatever it may be that person trying to develop i often get this question of how many times a week should i work out or how many times a week should i do injury prevention work or explosive work or speed training or running, etc. So I'm going to make you guys a short, a very concise video. I'm not going to drag this video on for 15, 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to make you guys a really concise video on how you can properly and effectively structure your workout plan in order to optimize your ability and perform at the highest level within your sport. Okay. And now within this video, we're going to talk about how many times a week you should train. We're going to talk about what you should do during off days. We're going to talk about what you need to do during these training days. I'm gonna teach you guys how to actually structure your workout so that you optimize your development. And lastly, I'm just gonna teach you guys what different components you should add into your training in order to get the most out of this training, especially if we're talking about certain sports, baseball, football, rugby, lacrosse, swimming, um, wrestling. I'm gonna to touch on a lot of different things, so just make sure that you guys pay attention, take notes if you need to, okay? Other than that, enjoy the video, much love. Okay, so for this example that I'm going to give you guys today, we're going to base this example off you guys wanted to develop explosiveness and speed, okay? That's today's example of the workout split that I'm going to give you guys. So with that being said, there's a lot of different components and factors that you want to focus on when you're developing explosiveness and speed. So you want to make sure that you focus on a lot of single leg training, okay? You want to eliminate those muscle imbalances. As I often mention, us athletes, we have one leg that's operating at 80% and the other leg that's operating at 20%. When this is the case, you have a huge muscle imbalance. This then leaves you more susceptible to injury, and it also leaves so much more explosiveness and speed on the table. Can you imagine having both legs operate at 100% or both legs operate at 80%? How much more explosive you'd be? We all have one leg that's dominant, and that's fine, but the focus is to get both legs on the even playing field. If you could get both legs on the even playing field, you'd be so much more explosive. So you also want to have a lot of explosive days, of course, but within those explosive days, you have to get real specific. When being explosive, the focus is to be able to transfer force as fast as possible. So within these training sessions, you want to make sure that you're putting your body in position to transfer force as fast as possible in the vertical plane, in the horizontal plane, in different planes. That way your body's used to producing force in these different planes at maximum efficiency. And of course, you want to have your heavy weightlifting days. A lot of people think that I'm against heavy weightlifting and I'm not. I think producing maximum force is everything, but you have to be careful about how you go about these things. But you wanna have these heavy lifting days. And then on to the injury prevention work, you wanna strengthen the joints, you wanna strengthen the quads and knees, you wanna make sure that you're strengthening the ankles, you wanna make sure that you're doing a lot of mobility work. We have to do tons of mobility work. The more mobile you are, the more explosive you will be, the faster you'll run, and the better you'll move as an athlete within your sport, no matter what sport you play. And you'll lower your chance of being injured. And then you guys already know I'm going to talk about rest. We have to have these proper recovery days, active recovery, recovery where you don't do anything at all. There's different types of recovery, and I'm going to talk about that. Well, I'm going to touch on that a little bit. But yeah, so we're going to put all these components together in the training split. And I want you guys to really take notes, apply this to yourselves. If you guys have any specific questions, shoot me a comment and I'll definitely get back to you guys with, you know, a, a very detailed answer. All right, y'all. So let's dive right into it. So for day one, which is Monday. On Mondays, you should be feeling your best. Your legs should be fresh. They should not be fatigued. On Monday, you need to take advantage of your energy levels, all right? And this is why we produce maximum force on these days. This is where you're doing your squats, your deadlifts, your power cleans. This is where you're doing all the heavy stuff, producing maximum force, teaching your body to produce maximum force, okay? And then with that, I like to follow that up with contrast training. Contrast training in simple terms is when you trick your body into thinking that it's more stronger than what it is. So for example, you do a deadlift and you follow that deadlift immediately up with broad jumps or you follow that deadlift up with plyometric box jumps. This is when you're doing the deadlift, it supercharges your neuromuscular system, okay? Once your neuromuscular system is charged up, when you go into a non-weighted movement, a jump or a broad jump, when you do a movement of that sort, your nervous system is still supercharged up. So then your nervous system is still trying to produce that max force while non-weighted. This in turn makes you more explosive, makes you a lot faster. It just speeds up the explosive development a lot more. And that's why I'm a big fan of contrast training. So I would say heavy lifting, contrast training. Keep in mind within these sessions, every day that you train, you want to make sure that you're doing some sort of knee strengthening, ankle strengthening, and mobility work. You have your days where you're doing these things specifically, but 
you want to make sure that you prep every session, especially your explosive sessions with knee strengthening. So for example, ISO holds, okay? You want to make sure that you put in some mobility work, okay? And a few reps, it doesn't have to be anything overwhelming. Now, Tuesday, I advise recovering fully. No active recovery. You can go to practice that day or you can do an upper body day. That's fine. But Tuesday, I want you guys to allow the legs to recover and allow the muscle fibers to actually rebuild so that what you did on Monday actually counts towards your development and you're not just beating your legs down, beating your muscles down, all right? If you keep working and working and working, you're not actually developing. Now you're not allowing your muscle fibers to rebuild. You're just beating the muscles up, beating the muscles up, and now development doesn't happen. So for Tuesday, I want you guys to just take that day off and allow yourself to rebuild. Now, practicing your sport is okay. All right, practicing your sport or doing an upper body day or a core day is perfectly fine. Wednesday is when we get into the bread and butter. This day is where you wanna focus on lifting lightweight fast, plow metrics, jumps, nothing but explosive ability. We'll focus on a lot of jump squats, you know, kettlebell jump squats, a lot of box jumps, um, a lot of depth drops, a lot of depth jumps. Our main focus with developing speed and explosiveness is lifting lightweight fast. You wanna be able to transfer force as fast as possible. That's the name of the game. That's how you develop speed. That's how you develop jumping and explosiveness, period. So on these days, I would do a lot of single leg work in which we do, you know, reverse lunges. We do lightweight reverse lunges. And you really single these legs out, especially that weaker leg, and you teach each leg to produce max force on its own. That's the trick to the trade. You want to make sure that you're teaching each leg to produce maximum force. So on these days, we're going lightweight. Keep in mind, this is not heavyweight at all. I'm talking about you put 10 pound weights on the barbells and you just go crazy. You know, we're doing single leg squats. We're doing single leg deadlift. We're doing reverse lunges. We're doing single leg box jumps. We're really teaching the body, literally teaching the body to produce maximum force as fast as possible, okay? So that's what that day looks like. Also, I'm gonna say it again. Within this prep day, you wanna make sure that you activate the glutes. You wanna make sure that you're doing hip mobility work. You have to mobilize the hips, especially before a jumping day, okay? The more mobile your hips are, the more explosive you will be, and the more optimal your session will be, the more optimal your development will be, okay? So just keep that in mind. You wanna prep the knees, you wanna prep the ankles, especially if you're working elasticity, especially if you're working this explosive stuff. You wanna prep the ankles, okay? When you prep the quads, when you prep the knees the right way, you have to keep in mind, all of our force comes from our glutes, comes from our quads, comes from our knees. So when you're prepping and strengthening the knees, you're activating the glutes before these sessions, you get optimal development. You get so much more out of your session. Now Thursday, you wanna go with active recovery. I recommend having a simple, solid, concise hip mobility session in which we strengthen the hips, in which we mobilize the hips, all right? You wanna unlock the hips, develop that range of motion with the hips, train your hips to be loose, have that better range of motion so that you do lower your chance of being injured, so that you do optimize development, optimize speed and explosiveness, all right? Now within that hip mobility session, that's all you wanna do that day. You don't need to do no core, you don't need to do anything extra. You wanna stay off the legs, just do the hip mobility work and keep it at that. Allow your legs to recover and rebuild from that explosive session you did the day prior. Now with Friday, we're gonna have a sprinting session. Now, keep in mind, within the sprinting session, you do not have to be extremely fatigued, your legs do not have to be extremely dead. Okay, with the sprint session, it needs to be concise, it needs to make sense, and you need to get full rest in between every rep when you do your sprint sessions, okay? That's how you actually develop speed, and that's how you have optimal development within a speed session, okay? You don't want to just do a 50-yard sprint, go right back, do another 50-yard sprint. That then turns into conditioning. That's no longer a speed session, okay? That's cardiovascular endurance. That is not speed development. Within these speed sessions, you can keep your reps anywhere from eight to 15 reps of nice, concise speed reps, allowing yourself to get full recovery in between every rep, okay? Here's where I like to spice things up a little bit. Now, after this session, your legs shouldn't be too tired, okay? After this session, I want you guys to have an injury prevention slash single leg day, okay? Now, within this session, all we're focusing on is building strength and stability within the knees, strength and stability within the ankles, and strength and stability within the hips, as well as the mobility, okay? So right after this sprint session is over, you can get you some food, or you can just get straight into it. All right, and then on Saturday, we have another active recovery day, but I recommend doing the same hip mobility routine that you did earlier within a week, okay? And then on Sunday, you just wanna rest. You just wanna give yourself that day off. No upper body, no practice, no getting nothing. You just wanna allow your body to recharge, reset your nervous system so that you have maximal gains within this upcoming week. I hope you guys find value within that. If you guys have any specific questions, please reach out to me, comment, and I'll get back to you, all right? But yeah, other than that, please like the video for me. Subscribe to your boy. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Much love. Peace.